Here we go. Rippo in the building. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. All right, all right. What's going on with your little lady? Uh, I'm just heading to California. So that's I that, said, you know, same thing, different day. <laughs> so that's that's the that that's the route that you drive, or you just or you just all over like OTR. I'm OTR, yeah. With that said. Let's start with your story, man. How you got into trucking and all that other good stuff. Love to hear how you got started. Uh, what's the journey for you so far? So go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know what's up about you. Yeah, so uh, this is Ripple and Sound, a.k.a. Ripple. Um, I originally, uh, you know, my dad was a trucker for over 30 years and, uh, I didn't see him a lot, obviously, <laughs> but, uh, he, he, uh, you know, stayed on the road. He didn't really have a whole lot to do with my life, but we did, you know, get some time on the road here and there together. And so that was kind of like my first taste of trucking was riding with him. And to be honest, I was kind of scared to do it most of my life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, also not as interested, you know, I was young and wanting to party and, and, do all the things you can't do if you're a truck driver. So, uh, I lived, you know, did, did some awesome other, some other jobs that were really awesome. And, um, eventually kind of started to mature and, uh, started driving at FedEx, uh, doing some local routes. And then after a few years doing that, I was just, I just felt like I was ready to take that step into driving a, a big truck and, and doing flatbed and eventually starting my own company and uh, even potentially starting a fleet with FedEx. All right. So, um, so what would you, so, you know, you say that uh, you, 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 your father was a trucker for over 30 years was, and you mentioned that he wasn't in your life, but he was in your life. But was he, was he like in your life? Like he was coming home every weekend. Was him and it was him and no. your, your your mother was still together while while he was trucking. No, so that was kind of like a they had a fling, um, but it was short lived. They never got married or anything, and um, they were broken up by the time my mom had me. And it was nothing bad. Like they, you know, my mom still loves my dad to this day and um he never had any hard feelings about her but just his situation you know he had two other kids uh with a woman that he did marry and so um he was being a dad to them and you know he really couldn't be a dad to me too i live far away by the way from where he where he lived um so it was more like visiting, you know, I would visit him for a little while here and there and he wasn't like a, a daily part of my life. So is it safe, was it safe to say that he was married while he was having a fling with your mother and, and you was just a love child? No, no. Um, he got married, uh, I think he actually was divorced by that time, um, by the time I was born. I don't know, dude. But to be honest, though, my dad was, you know, he was mostly on the road all the time, and he he has kids with, with various women. <laughs> so, I yeah. got you. I got you. I got you. But uh, but back then, he, he did come, you know, he, he was a father to you, though, right? I mean, he wasn't one of them type yeah. of fathers that said, okay, well, I had this kid, but I don't have nothing to do with this kid. He he came whenever he got a chance to to be in your life when he when he had the chance, right? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 So, yeah. So, you went out, went out over the road with him and enjoy all that good stuff. But that didn't come that that didn't come into play for you to to get into get into truck driving until after you what did FedEx? Right. Yeah. And uh, my father had, you know, taught me a lot about trucking when I was with him. He was always trying to teach me stuff, um, and I learned stuff. You know, I just 
it took me a while to want to actually genuinely be a part of that. All right. So when did you? So after all, you know, after all that you did in the past, when did you? Uh, when did you decided to get your CDL? What was? What was that? What was that thing that that driving factor that that made you to made you decide to get your CDL? Uh, you know, when I was at FedEx, um, I I loved working uh, there, but I soon realized that the part that I loved most was driving the big truck. <laughs> and um, then, you know, I just kind of also wanted more for my life. Um, I was getting paid well, but I felt like I could be making more for the amount of work that I was putting into everything. And they offered me a raise to stay, but by that point, like I had already done so much research um, about, you know, flatbed and starting your own trucking company and then I found time through all the research and by that point I was just I was I, I felt like I was needing to go and that getting into flatbed was the next thing I needed to do it just felt right it felt like without a shadow of a doubt I knew that that's what I wanted to do okay flatbed so that's uh so you did your research and you you wanted to get out and get grimy and get dirty huh Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, how, yeah, I, I mean, did, did you, did you go to prime for your CDL or did you go to, go to a school prior to going to prime for your CDL? Um, I got my class ACL with prime. Yep. And, um, I did 50,000 loaded miles of flatbed training over the road with the trainer. Male or female? Uh, and how was it? How was the experience? I had a great experience. Um, I still talk to that trainer uh, daily, almost, and if not, like weekly for sure. And, you know, I did 50,000 loaded miles with him, and he really took the time to teach me how to drive, right? Teach me how to back, teach me how to use my jig. He really taught me how to do the things that now when I talk to new people who are they're like oh I just got my first truck I just got out of training um don't know you know how to go down a, a steep hill you know or you know a six percent grade and and so it it just surprises me that the difference in training and so it makes me feel grateful that I got that from him because you know but when when I was ready to get my truck my first truck was signed I knew I was ready to go on my own. I felt good going on my own. Even with flatbed, you know, I knew that I, I hadn't yet hauled everything that I was going to haul, so I didn't know how to secure every load possible, but I felt good enough with what I did know that uh, I could get by, especially most of these shippers. If you don't know how to secure your load, they'll tell you. All right. So, well, Brian, after, you know, after you went out with your trainer, you said you had an awesome experience and you came back, you got your, you got your truck. Uh, did Prime, what, did you go company or did you go lease right off the rip? And if, if you went lease, if you went lease, did Prime talk you into going lease? Uh, no, I did go lease, but I actually, had originally planned on going company and really in the long when I look back on it the reason why I wanted to go company was because I was afraid to go leave I was you know I've heard the horror stories I've heard the failures I've also heard the successes you know obviously my dad had his own company so I I, I know it's possible to be successful um but I was kind of afraid and after doing the 50,000 miles with my trainer, who was Lee, you know, he didn't pressure me into it. I just naturally became curious about it because I saw him doing it. You know, and I'm like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And um, he never pressured me, but he always answered my questions truthfully. The good, bad, you know, it didn't matter. He was honest with me about whatever it was I would want to know. And by the end of it, I felt like I was informed enough and confident enough to run my own truck under my own LLC. So how do you feel about, how, how do you feel about drivers? Uh, because, you know, a lot of drivers have 
various opinions, including driver, uh, previous drivers for the company. Uh, how do you feel about the term uh, glorified company driver when you tell them that you're a lease driver with Prime? I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> so really, you know, the perks of being of a lease driver, I knew it wasn't, I knew it was a glorified company driver. Let's put it like that. Uh, but I knew like having the ability to make my own decisions meant more to me than the comfort of just being a, a company driver. Cause I, you know, when I was uh, getting my CDL, I actually was on a truck with a company driver. And so I got to see both sides of it with Brian and um, they take care of their company drivers. So, you know, there's a lot of perks to it. Um, so it wasn't an easy decision for me to make, um, but it, but it was the freedom in the end. It was the freedom that being a lease driver would give me that. That was why I wanted to do it. How long, and now I'm actually, um, how, how long you been, ahead. how long you been, a, how long you been a, a driver, lease driver for prime? Uh, two years. Oh, okay. So two years you had your, uh, you got your, you got your CDLs at the same time. Uh, well, I've had my truck for just about two years. So yeah, it's, um, let's see. It'll be three years this spring. Okay. Congratulations. All right. Love when the way station right. tells you to come in and come on out. All right, so going on three years, nice. congratulations, man. Uh, flatbed, though. I mean, was your was your father a flatbedder, or you was just inter yeah. interested right off the rip being a flatbedder? Uh, well, I was interested immediately, but um, he did do flatbed for most of his career, and then uh, for the later part of it, he switched to uh, reefer and dry van. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, well, Prime, man, going on three years, uh, being a lease driver with Prime, uh, as far as leasing goes, are you leased to purchase the truck very soon, or are you are you just, it's like renting the truck, pretty much? Um, that's a decision I still have to make with this truck. originally. It is set up um, with Prime as a um, basically like a rental, but I since I've had the truck for two years, because you have to have it for two years minimum. Um, I've been thinking about potentially refinancing it through my bank and then just taking the truck. But um, I have ordered a new truck that I, as a lease purchase, uh, but it's not through Prime; it's through an, uh, a leasing company. Um, and that'll, I guess it'll be a loan, a loan essentially, because I'm going to have uh, my end date to be like 2024 or 2025 when that truck paid off. Okay, congratulations. Um, thank you. And so that's, I'm still figuring that out, but there's a good chance I'll, I'll just let Prime take this truck and um, I'll start with that new truck because I really didn't get to. While I do love this truck, I didn't get to like customize it or do anything that I would have done to it. So I'm thinking about just the new truck that I have ordered, starting fresh with that one, and then building on a fleet from there. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Are you once you get your own truck, are you are you going to continue to lease one with Prime, or are you going to try and expand your options? No, I will absolutely stay with Prime. I want to build a fleet with Prime. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, that's that. That's that loyalty I hear in the background, huh? <laughs> well, there's a lot of perks, you know. There's a big safety net under me, and um, should I start my own authority, I can still haul their freight and have that, you know, that security of that consistent freight and and, and good freight. Um, but I honestly, right now, I don't have an interest in starting my and in, in running it under my own authority. I'll just run it under theirs, but under my own LLC. Okay, that's what's up. 
So let me ask you this right quick. Would, uh, you know, do you, you know, you've been out here for three years. You're still young in the game. Uh, still, right. you're still learning, of course. And of course, you still, you know, will yeah. prime the, the, the coat of trucking. Uh, do you ever, do you ever get criticism from male truckers, especially from flatbed male truckers? In person or on the internet? Mm, I would say both, maybe, I guess. Uh, in person? No. In person, I get a lot of praise. So many compliments. You know, it's not um, uncommon for me to be at a shipper securing a load and there be a couple guys standing around the trailer watching me. Um, and, it, and at first, it kind of weirded me out, but I've gotten used to it. And it's not because it's, it's not, I don't think it's because of like anything to do with my look or anything. I think it's just the fact that I'm a woman in flat that and they want to see like, does she know what she's doing? If not, like I'm going to give her some tips and tricks, you know, and they do. Um, and I'm totally open to that. So, uh, but on the internet, I absolutely uh, get a lot of criticism from people, from all kinds of people, not just flat men. But, you know, being, you know, being, uh, being, being, on the internet you 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 come across a whole bunch of people sometimes you know some, sure. some sometimes you just take you know you you just take what you know what they say in one ear and right out the other because half the people half the people yeah. on the internet don't even don't even drive and majority of them is just on there just to just to hear what they want to talk yep no you're right about that all right. So, so with Prime, man, I mean, you know, we, you know, I came across you uh, on TikTok and, you know, you was, uh, you know, you, you did, uh, you know, did a TikTok about, you know, about guns and all like that. And mm -hmm. that's how, that's why I reached out to you because that's a big, it's a big topic. You know what I'm saying? Prime is one of those companies that don't allow, you know, guns on the trucks. But how do you, you know, how do you feel about your own personal protection on uh on a truck and being out here as a as a female driver? I mean, you know, I respect them and their policies for sure. Um, and I understand why they have them. But the one thing is that Prime is not going to be paying any funeral bills or medical costs or consoling my family if something were to happen to me. Um, they will, you know, I'll, I'll, they'll have a replacement in, in, a, in another truck if they have to the next day. It, it's not really, for me, I don't hold value into what they say about my protection because there, there's no consequence for them if something happens to me. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure they do um, insurance policies on their drivers. I'm pretty sure. I'm not don't I'm not 100 percent on that, but I have heard that um, word of mouth from other people. So, <laughs> does that tell you anything? Does that answer your question? Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I I, I hear you 100 percent. And that, you know, like I said, I I did a video about you know about companies you know having that in their policies and everything. And I, and I am a whole hardly, a whole hardly an advocate for, you know, female safety as well as my own safety. See, the thing with me is, and, and here's the problem that I have with social media, social media just, you know, got everybody effed up with, with everything, everything. I mean, oh, they yeah. just had to, everybody <laughs> have to put everything on the internet. You know what I'm saying? So me, I'm I'm from the old school. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you whether or not I have my weapon on my truck or not. You just go you you'll find out. Let's put it like that. I don't need to right. come on social media to validate that. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. And that's where everybody yeah. and that's where the twist comes in the play where everybody comes on and and you know and say, yeah, I I got my gun on the truck, and and this is where right. my gun is at, and 
And if you come on, if you come on my truck, just know that I have a gun. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, it's not necessary. A lot of stuff just not it is just not needed on the internet. <laughs> you know? Right. And to, to set the record straight, my original video about that, um, I never actually even mentioned guns or specified guns. I said uh, I, I was talking about companies with a, with a no weapon policy, and that no weapon policy covers a variety of weapons, not just yeah. guns. But everyone fixated on guns, and so the whole thing just became about guns after that, you know. Um, but it's, 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 That's that's what's that's what's up. 